changing fractions to decimals. To change a fraction to a decimal, divide the numerator by the denominator. For example, in order to use the calculator, Judy needs to change the fraction one-half into a decimal. If we look at this one-half, we have to change it to a decimal, so we're going to do one divided by two. The numerator, the top number, always goes inside the division bar. That's an important thing to remember. We cannot divide two into one. One is too small. So we're going to place a decimal point and a zero so that we can divide. The decimal point comes straight up. And now you can treat the 1.0 as 10. 2 divides into 10 5 times. 5 times 2 is 10, and we get no remainder. So 1 half as a decimal is 0.5. Our second example is to change 3 fourths into a decimal. Once again, the numerator, which is the top number, always goes inside the division bar. The 4 is on the outside. We cannot put 4 into 3. 3 is too small. So we place a decimal point and some zeros. We bring that decimal point straight up, and now we can divide. 4 goes into 30 7 times. 7 times 4 is 28. We subtract and get 2. Bring down the zero. 4 goes into 20 5 times. 5 times 4 is 20. We get no remainder. If you continue to get a remainder, you may place more zeros at the end to bring down. If you want to use your shortcut for long division, if you have your 3.00 and you're dividing by 4, remember to bring that decimal point straight up. 4 goes into 30 seven times with 2 left over. 4 goes into 25. Either way, if you show your long division or do short division, 3 fourths is equivalent to 0.75. Let's look at a few more examples. Let's change 1 fourth into a decimal. 1 divided by 4. Remember that the numerator goes inside the division bar. I'm going to place a decimal point and a zero. Don't forget to bring that decimal point straight up. 4 goes into 10 two times with two left over. Since I have left over, I'm going to place another zero there. 4 goes into 20 five times with nothing left over. So 1 fourth is equivalent to 0.25. If I look at the next example, let's change 1 eighth into a decimal. 1 divided by 8, once again, we need a decimal point and a zero. The decimal point comes straight up. 8 goes into 10 one time with 2 left over. So I'll place another zero there. 8 goes into 20 two times with 4 left over. We need another zero. 8 goes into 40 five times and now there's no remainder. So we have 1 eighth is equal to 0.125. Our last example is 1 20th. 1 divided by 20. When I place my decimal point in 0, I'm already too small. Bringing that decimal point up, 20 does not go into 10 at all. So I must put a placeholder 0 there to start. Then I can put another zero here and say 20 goes into 100 five times. Since 5 times 20 is 100, I have no remainder. 1 20th is equal to 0 0.05. Extracting oil from the ocean or ground requires specially designed equipment. Many parts for this equipment are custom made to exact specifications. Let's visit a machine shop that specializes in making oil field equipment. 
This is Mike, and he operates this equipment over here, and he works for S Knus SBS. And what kind of machine is this, Mike? Right, this is a four-axis uh, CNC milling center. Uh, computer control, numer numeric control is what CNC stands for. So it's computer control, but we still have to check locations and numbers according to blueprints that we have to, to make the parts to the customer specification. And the part that's in the machine, this is the print for that part, and it's just loaded with all kinds of decimals that Mike has to calculate. And now it's going to pick up and it's going to make an x-axis cut. So uh, here we go. And we're off. Let's say that Mike has a part that is 4 and 7 sixteenths in diameter. And he has to mill off 225 thousandths from the outside surface. What should the dimension be after the part is milled? Let's figure it out. So the outside diameter, this diameter, is 4 and 7 sixteenths. And we need to mill and this dimension here is 0.225. So we want to find out what is this dimension. So we have to deduct 225 thousandths from 4 and 7 sixteenths. So let's change 7 sixteenths into a decimal so we can subtract 225 thousandths from 4 and 7 sixteenths. So 7 sixteenths equals, and we'll divide then, 7.00 by 16. So bring up the decimal point. 16 goes into 70 how many times? 16 times 4 equals 24, that'd be 64, so it would be 4 over here, so 64 is 6 over, and bring down the 0, and how many times does 16 go into 60? That would be 3 times, 16 times 3 is 18, 48, so minus 48, bring the 3 over here, and that will be then remaining 12, bring down the 0. How many times will 16 go into 120? So it would be 16 times 7 is 42, 7, 11, so it would be 112, deduct that, so it will be 8, that will be 7, we should put, bring the 7 over here, we need another 0, bring that down, how many times does 16 go into 80? 16 times 5 equals 30, 5 plus 80 minus 80 equals 0, so 7 sixteenths equals 0.4375. Now we can subtract 4.375. We can subtract this number, 225 thousandths, minus 0.225, and that will equal 5, 2, 1, 2, 4, so this dimension then will be 4.2125. And so you can see it's important to know how to subtract decimals from fractions. Please pause the video now and complete the problems in your workbook. When finished, press play and we'll continue with the next lesson.